All right, let's do some stuff. What are we gonna do in this part? So I'm not really sure what this is gonna be. I'm just gonna, this is where this whole build starts. Um, uh, we're gonna play it by ear. We're just gonna start building and see how we go. You can't make plans for, for this. It's very difficult what I'm kind of trying to achieve here. I want three screens, remember? I'm having three screens, which means I'm gonna have two motorized screens in the ceiling. So what I've discovered is I can't do any more with this curved sofa, unfortunately. I can't work out how far back it's gonna go or how far in front it's gonna come until I've actually installed those other two screens, this one included. Let me actually just wind that up. And yeah, so that one is gonna be in the ceiling as well as this one here. See the one on the floor here? I found this at the dump. It's a 150 inch 4.3 screen Technic screen. It costs someone $3,000. Um, I found two of them and it is amazing. I think I spent $200 just buying this stuff, you know, the, the, the brackets, I got three of those and I had to buy the remote as well as the IR receiver. But um, yeah, I found that, I found two of them. I couldn't believe it. So one is definitely gonna go in here. Um, because, hey, I watch a lot of old school TV shows and I just think that would be incredible. It's actually the exact same length as my 180 inch, my main screen. So it's gonna look amazing. So I know people are just laughing at me, but I don't care. <laughs> it's my cinema, I'll do what I want. So, so the plan is today is to clean up all these shelves. I have to remove at least these two middle shelves here because I can't do anything with those there. I've got to get behind there and have a good look. In fact, it, it would be a lot easier if this bottom one wasn't there, but I want to keep that there for the time being because at least I can put the speakers behind the screen once I've built the acoustically transparent screen and get a good feel for that. Um, but yeah, so today the mission is to remove these two shelves here. I don't know where I'm putting all of that stuff but we are also going to have to pull this sofa curve down as well as the template, etc. So that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna work out where I'm gonna to have to mount these two screens. So get ready, that's the plan, let's do it. Okay, so I've put on a movie. This is what's gonna keep us company. Oh look, Bilbo. I thought we'd put on an alien. You know, alien, so we're gonna see, I'm in the mood, I'm in the real nostalgic mood at the moment, so let's see how many of these I can get through today while working. But um, yeah, I found this TV at the dump and there was nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I've actually hung it from the ceiling and I haven't even taken the stand off, how funny is that? But I'll keep this TV, it's just the best TV. I think it's a series seven or a series eight, but I oh, love it. So that's gonna keep us company. I'm just gonna set you up over here on the ladder that I found at the dump as well. Um, angle you over here. I'm just gonna use one camera today. I'm not gonna go to too much trouble. But um, let's do some type of time-lapse thing. Awesome, here we go. So, we're getting there. We're up to aliens. 
That was, I think that was, what was her name? Vasquez or something like that, Vasquez? Hudson? The sergeant, he's about to die. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And, uh, oh, this is a scary bit. Anyway, let's get back to this. Sigourney's about to take charge. And uh, anyway, now that I've actually removed those shelves, it is so much better. It's so much better. I can actually see what I'm going to be doing in there. It's going to make planning this thing a lot easier. So let's just remove some more of those battens from the back wall, as well as the framing above and the stencil, or at least the template, and see what we got. Oh, this here, this bottom shelf, actually I should show you this, I'm living on the edge, I'm living on the edge, check this out, these shelves, the way I made these shelves is I obviously put this vertical piece in, but you can see I just batten screwed some of these lightweight pine battens in there, they're held in by one batten screw on each of, you know, there's only one, two, three verticals, and I've been walking on that. I can see myself falling through there at some stage. But um, that's all right, live on the edge. I might actually throw a couple of um, pieces of pine underneath their vertical ones to take some of the weight as well. But, um, <laughs> oh man, got to be careful. In fact, I'm jumping up right now. found this um, <laughs> DeWalt light with a bunch of um, other tools in a bag. I've actually put a video up about it recently. Like all these power tools and power saws, all DeWalt. I've got batteries and chargers and everything. So it's the first time I'm using this light. But uh, just show you what's going on behind here at the moment, what I've done. I'm lucky I've got these joists. But uh, yeah, I've got to redo everything now. So. At least I can see, at least I can see what I've got to work with now and start some planning. I'd really like to take this 150-inch uh, screen out and I'm sure I'm going to have to do that probably shortly, maybe in this video. Yeah, definitely in this video, um, I think. Because, yeah, I've got to redo everything, so that has to come out. But the thing is, I want to watch, I like sitting in here at night time watching movies and stuff. It's awesome. So... But then again, it's probably easier just to put it back up. I've only got it. You can see how I've got it. It's just resting on those amp, uh, F clamps. So I could probably lift that up myself anyway. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to take a bit and uh, just kind of get an idea of what's going on. I have to um, say so this is the screen. You can actually see this is what the screen's going to be doing. It's going to be on a hinge up there. So this is the main, the main pillar. There'll be one on each side, so I have to kind of, I'm pretty sure I'm in the right position now. I think I'm just gonna work off that position. And, uh, but these are too short, obviously. I have to go to the, you know, lumber yard and get some more pine. 
um, and uh, do that side, take it all the way down to the floor. Um, these actual sh shelves that you see here, this shelf, just imagine that this shelf here was going to be the shelf that I have my speakers on. So what I need to do with this shelf, I have to build this shelf in a way that it doesn't have any supports here. I don't want supports in the middle. In the middle, everything has to hang off, you know, basically the ends like this here. It has to hang off that end as well uh, as that end there. So it's gonna be interesting. It's gotta be a floating shelf. Um, I can't have any legs on it, so, you know, it's, it's a difficult. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to go and get some angle, some, some steel angle, really heavy duty stuff, and use that to make my shelves. Because the thing is, I want to have masking at the bottom of my screen, and it's like four metres wide. And when I'm not using the masking, I want to slide it underneath all of this stuff so there can't be any legs. So I don't know if that makes sense. I don't even know if I'm going to put this in the video. But um, yeah, so so I don't know. I'm not sure where to go. I think I'm going to have to, I might do it today. It's getting a bit late, but I'm going to go to the timber yard tomorrow, pick up some pine and redo these legs, I think. Not legs, the, the pillars on either side of the screen. Let me just set you back over here. And I'll show you from a distance. So yeah, so the screen is going to tilt out of the way, so it will actually lift up like that when I want to get to the speakers and so forth. It'll clip up or tie up to the, the ceiling. So this here, this has to be extended. All of this has to be removed and the shelf, the shelf isn't even going to be up that high. The shelf will be down here. So I'm pretty sure that uh, 2.35 cinema scope is about from here to the top. So the shelf will have to be about here, I'd say. But hey, listen, we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> um, that's not what I started this video for, I just forgot. <laughs> we wanna get these, um, we wanna get these um, projector screens up. Okay, let's get back on track. <laughs> so many aspects to this and, oh man. But at least I've started. So these screens, yes, 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 yes. But yeah, actually, what I just showed you, that's why I showed you. I do have to put these in because I need to hang the screens on those. So what I just said isn't a waste of time. I do need those up there because then I need to frame it across, frame it right across between the pillars. And that's what the screen, the back one, the black one down there will actually sit on. And if I have to pack it out a little bit, I can always pack it out to clear, you know, the frame of the screen up the top here, the, the, 180 inch screen and then this white screen that's up there already this one here then I can actually move that I was actually thinking about actually pushing it and sitting it on this thing here this framing and the sofa framing but um you see I can't just do that I have to actually brace that up there as well so there's a lot of things to take into consideration. It's, and this is why you can't plan ahead. You just can't with a job like this. Whoa, what was that? Oh, these remote guns. Anyway, let me have a look. I'll get back to you and uh, we'll continue this video somehow. I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but uh, we'll do something. All right, so I have a plan. I spent all night last night sitting in a chair, staring at this part, and um, I was taking measurements and just seeing things and trying to imagine stuff. And listen, I'll try to explain to you what I'm gonna do, but I'm sure no one's gonna understand because honestly, I only just understand it. But um, listen, it all comes down to this pillar here. This one that you see going all the way up to the top there. Everything hinges on that. 
Now that there is basically what you see here. This is just a couple of offcuts. But on the other side of that one, we have another one that I have batten screwed. So this is one solid, you know, heavy piece of timber basically. And yeah, so what I've done is I have designed this. Let's get up here. What I've done is I've designed this in a way that if you have a look here, so here is the, basically just here, this point here is where this green fabric comes down and this basically pulls out and is on a hinge. Now, um, let me think. So the idea is from the screen fabric at the moment back to the wall is exactly, well to these studs is I think exactly 700 or maybe 710. Um, now what I've done is if I actually move that back 50 mil the entire thing back 50 mil, then I can actually fit, you can see there's a joist, frickin' joist, I wish it was, you know, that way a bit more, but um, it's so in the way, but um, if I actually move everything back towards the wall that way, I can clear that joist and I can have, you know, that black screen that's down there, the 150 inch 4.3 screen technic screen, I can actually get it in between there and I can lift it up high um, in between both of these joists basically and the beauty of doing that is then I can get the other screen that screen that you see there basically the white one I can actually slide that so that it is virtually sitting underneath that black one but the screen fabrics on both screens are really close to each other and at the same time, incredibly close to this one here. So they should all basically be within, you know, 30, may, 30 to 50 mil maybe. And I reckon that's going to be really cool. Um, but the cool part is, the way I've done this is I showed you that main beam that's going down there. Well, the cool part is, is that is actually being held onto this beam. Remember, that beam has that huge... LVL piece of timber in there. It's really thick. Well, it's actually being held to that by two batten screws. So if I decide, wait, listen, I want to go back even further or I want to bring it back out, all I really need to do is undo those two batten screws and the entire front section should slide in and out of, you know, however much I want it. And that's a beautiful thing because it just makes life a bit easier in the long run. But uh, yeah, the other thing I might quickly tell you, and I might be confusing you a little bit more by telling you this, but you can see these two pieces of, what is it, 90 by 35 mil. Um, well, you can actually see on the front there, that is a 70 by 35 mil piece. And that is actually screwed to the front of that. And if we get back down here and have a look at this example piece that I showed you, so that's, imagine that's it. Well, on the front of that, I have another long stick of this stuff. That's just a, a little off cut, but I have another piece like that, and it will be screwed to the entire front. And that will make that whole, you know, side column, I have to do the other side as well, exactly the same. That will make it extra strong. But the main reason, the main reason I am actually putting that front piece on is because you know how I've got this shelf here, I need to put shelves for speakers, etc., behind the screen, and I want to put one just off the ground as well. Well, these shelves need to be floating shelves, which means I can't have any feet or you know supports underneath the shelves onto the carpet. It's and the reason I'm wanting to do that is because, and I mentioned this in a previous video, I actually want to have my masking. Um, I want to be able to slide it underneath my screen and this whole front section. And if I have supports there, I can't do that. And uh, so that's the reason. So basically what I'm going to do is just imagine that's gone for the moment. I am just going to put half a slot through there, enough to accommodate an angle piece of, you know, iron, really heavy duty bit of angle that will actually, I'm not sure which way it'll go, you know, that way and down, I guess. And um, basically that will not bend and we can actually span that all the way along to the other co column down there. But I thought 
because we're having to cut this in a little bit, well then let's strengthen that whole, this whole thing up again. And that's where this comes in. And we will actually cover that entire section and screw it. And yeah, that'll be perfect. That'll be heaps. And that's what I've decided to do. I hope that makes sense. If not, just keep watching and I'll, you know, give you more of a look later on. I'm hoping we might get one of the screens, at least that 4.3 screen in today and uh, hopefully <laughs> see how it looks. Oh, by the way, by the way, we actually, um, we got ourselves some timber. Here we go, we've got some down here. I've just cut one of those columns down. Uh, we got a bit over there on those horses. We got a few sticks sitting there, a couple on the ground in there. And uh, yeah, I know, listen, all of this stuff around the edge for the sofas and so forth, it can be just your standard framing stuff that uh, you get from Bunnings, you know, the lightweight, but uh, it is light. It's actually compared to the stuff that I get from another place that I, I buy from. This stuff here that I've just bought, it is solid. It's so heavy. I mean, the bunning stuff, it actually feels like balsa wood compared to that. So yeah, we're up a hundred bucks. So, so far I think we've spent $140 on this cinema and I think we've done pretty well. So got some more batten screws. These are, um, what are these? 65 mil batten screws. So they should, work out quite nicely beautifully look at that we'll get a few of those in there all right let's get to it All right, so there we go. That is our first column. Oh, so heavy. So this should slide along that beam to whatever position I want, but I have a position marked out. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be right. So, in fact, I might actually sink another one up the top here. No, I won't. I'll um, go through. No, I won't. I'll wait. I'll, I'll go through all of them when I screw it to the um, inside of that beam. But yeah, all right. So at least we're doing stuff. All right. I'll just show you something else I did. I got too kind of freaked out every time I was standing on this shelf here. I, I mentioned before. They're only kind of, this really lightweight pine is just batten screwed to these, you know, pretty heavy duty uprights, but still um, taking my weight walking up and down, that's not gonna take much of a bump to kind of fall through. So I end up uh, getting a couple of other pieces of framing pine and just chocking them in there. They're wedged in there really tightly. So I should be able to kind of relax a little bit more while I'm up there now, so awesome. So I'm going to probably remove that old one, the temporary one that I had up there. Um, I have to take some measurements from where I actually had that um, screen set up and uh, I'm gonna stick this other one up there and see how it looks. Oops, 
Sorry. All right. Okay. So I've had to make a slight change. I've packed it out up the top there rather than put that little packing piece at the end of my column there. So I'm going to lift this up and see if we can get it into place. need G clamp, F clamp. Okay, so you might recognize this long piece of framing as being the side of my projector screen. Well, at least this is a temporary one. This is just one that I mocked up. And uh, so, yeah, this was actually attached to the front there and it was attached, it still is attached to the um, temporary piece of, you know, post work or column work that was up there, you know, 20 minutes ago. But so what I want to do now is I want to remove it from there and I want to put it on our new existing column slash post whatever you want to call it this thing here we want to actually put it back on there make sure it fits nicely and then you know I can determine where the next parts of my framing will you know take place and uh, that will help me determine my next move so let's do that right now and see how we go Okay, so I've actually put that up there. It's opening quite nicely. It goes all the way up to, you know, the bottom of the sofa without, you know, touching or jamming up there. It's a really tight fit. Like this comes down seriously to like the millimeter, really does. And I'll show you something that I have to keep in mind when doing this. And that is the bottom here. If I can angle you down there, you can see there, <laughs> We have probably, it's actually at the moment, slightly less than um, probably 20 mil gap between the floor and the underside of that, you know, screen side. Um, and I think that's because maybe that bit of MDF up the top there for the sofa, I think it might be slightly bowed and just um, kind of closing the gap up there, that bit of sofa MDF. I might have to get a straight edge and uh, actually work it out really accurately. It's pretty close, 
But um, yeah, so the reason, so to get 180 inches in on this wall, um, that is, I'd say, let me have a look. So this is my finger. So that's probably like 15 mil, I'd say. And that's, that's good. Now, actually, I'd be happy with just that. Now, remember what I said in my previous videos? Um, I want to, I'm going to have masking along the entire bottom section of my screen, and that will mask it down to a 170-inch um, cinemascope, 2.35 to 1 screen. Now, that masking is going to stay on the screen the majority of the time. But uh, on the times that I want to use this as a 180 inch, like a full on IMAX type of look, I will be pulling that masking off. It's only going to be held on by my magnet. And uh, anyway, this is what I'm going to use for the masking. This is really cool stuff. It's pretty expensive stuff, but I find it at the dump. This is what um, sign writers use. They make signs out of this. It's like a polycarbonate, it's like an alloy, I can't remember what it's called, but um, it's like a one millimetre or half a millimetre of alloy on that side, half a millimetre on that side or one mil, and uh, in between it's like a polycarbonate. But uh, they make signs out of this stuff, so that's going to be what I'm going to make my masking out of. I'm going to wrap this stuff in uh, double velvet, and once I've pulled it off, rather than just have it sit on the floor, I am going to basically slide it underneath here. And that is why, folks, that is why I can't have any feet, legs, or anything on this particular, um, you know, couple of shelves that will be holding up the speakers behind my screen. But you can see there, we have more than enough room um, for some masking. In fact, we have probably enough to put another couple of sheets of that stuff underneath there if I ever want to mask any other parts off or... Uh, whatever, I can't really see me doing that, but uh, that is why. So I'm happy with that. That's kind of pretty cool. So that might actually make sense to a lot more people that have been wondering what I'm trying to do here, or it may have um, <laughs> made you more confused. But uh, yeah, so my masking is going to basically slide underneath here and probably all the way to the back wall or you know close to it I guess depending on how wide the masking is but uh, that's the idea behind that so I've got that up there now I'm just going to double check that um, piece of MDF make sure it isn't it kind of just by my eye looks like it could be a little bit bowed towards the column there but um it's yeah because yeah the funny thing is when you lift this up it actually um, needs to be able to kind of curl all the way back against that screen, you know. Um, as I say, you can actually see there how close it actually does get, but um, I'm sure we'll be fine. But remember, we are going to have to um, put velvet around that. That's actually the border um, of the screen, that bit of white architrave up there. I'm going to wrap that up in some velvet, some double velvet. So that'll give us probably another mil thickness, mil or two. So I have to take that into account as well. But I think we'll be right. I think we've got enough wiggle room anyway. So like I said, there's, you know, probably about 15 mil down there. So I think that's going to be okay. See, that's one of the biggest things I have to take into account with making this particular thing. But uh, anyway, let's get back to it. It is slightly bowed this, so just by a couple of mil, so I think if I just kind of pack that up like that, that'll keep it up there. Let's um, just grab my spirit level and see how we've gone with that. Yeah, that is nice and straight now. Okay, so I might actually try that again as far as lifting this side piece out and see how it looks. Want to make sure there's heaps of clearance there. Yep, 
yeah, I'm happy with that. Definitely. So that's that's given me the extra mill or two I need for the um, the velvet to go around this um, framework. Um, but isn't it amazing? It comes down this screen. Basically, this screen, if I wanted to have a 180 inch 16.9 screen, basically comes down to yeah the millimeter. It's nuts. In fact, yeah, the reason I can only do it is by using this thin type of pine as well as the, you know, you know, one inch kind of alloy. And that's the part of the reason I went with that, you know. Um, otherwise, I'd have to go down to like 175 or something, 178, I think. Oh, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it, was a, it took me a while to work out all the dimensions, but um, it was worth it because it's going to be freaking awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great. Happy. Happy from Iron Man. All right. Now. I don't know why I'm <laughs> why I'm going into real depth with this, but I'll show you what I want to do. Probably won't make the video, but um, yeah. So next plan is to put some horizontal pieces going from that side to what hopefully the actual, you know, I have to actually make that uh, column for down that end. But um, yeah, I want to basically have some horizontal framing that attaches from here all the way along and um, as well as up the top there as well and put some noggins in between kind of make a bit of a wall and that's what we will actually hang our black our black screen from but uh yeah it's kind of complicated <laughs> i've got all this stuff going on in my head right now but um i think for now i think what i might do is Hmm, actually those batten screws that are sticking out there, I might actually screw those in. So that's kind of locked them into position, at least when I put this back on, because I have to pull it all apart again and then do dry fit, do a lot of dry fits basically. But um, I'll kind of, you know, screw them into place so I know that's where that's going to be. But yeah, anyway, let me just play with this and I'll come back. Now, providing, <laughs> remember this, pro this is providing the carpet that I end up finding and choosing isn't overly thick and heavy. Um, yeah, we could have some interesting times ahead. But um, I think we'll be right. I'm just gonna lock this off up here. All right, so I'm just gonna park that for a while. I'm happy with my progress there. So I basically just have to mirror what I've done here with that end down there. So that means I'm gonna have to remove this temporary sample that I've put up and uh, yeah, and reposition everything. So yeah, let's do that. Hey, before I go any further, I'm actually just cleaning this shelf off. I haven't shown anyone these yet. Um, what do you think of these? I, I pulled these out of a, um, a really expensive wine fridge, glass door wine fridge at the dump. Got these beautiful stainless steel fronts to them. And I was thinking, I got them because I was thinking maybe AV rack. I don't know, what do you think? It's got these things slide in and out. They've got their own sliders. But um, yeah, I was at the dump, I saw it, I thought, I've got to get this. It was, I had to be really fast. Oh man, it was pretty late in the day. 
and you don't want to get caught kind of pinching this stuff even though it's about to get pushed up by the bulldozer and destroyed but yeah got them out so i'm thinking i'm not sure if i'm going to use them but um that was one thought i initially i thought that the glass door might make a nice like front um, for an av rack and then i looked deeper and i thought oh maybe these shells would work as well but um yeah <laughs> it's a bit of a funny story i'd tell you about before i remove them from the shelf interesting okay so <laughs> i'm putting this post down here this column and what I did was I measured off this joist here, the exact measurement that that post is off that joist over there, right? And perfect, awesome. But then I measured off the wall. See, I put that um, piece of timber up there. I measured off the wall to the back side of that post. <laughs> and I did the same with this one over here. And we're out by 25 mil. So, <laughs> I don't know, something's out. Um, I think, I remember when I was doing this wall, I did have to pack it out a bit and do a few things. You can actually see right up the top there, there's a bit of packing in there. I, it could be a range of things. So, listen, what I'm gonna do is actually go by the wall measurements. So, I will probably, what's that one up? That one up there is okay. So that's, uh, this one over here on this side is, 436 off the wall and this one over here is where do I write it 460 off the wall so I'll make this one 436 off the wall and uh, call it a day I think at least I know it's going to be perpendicular with the wall or parallel to the wall um, yeah 25 mil but uh, yeah I'm not going to do it from this side of the joist because then that means everything once I start building towards the wall um, everything's going to be out so you're better off just kind of um, doing it from the wall if that, if that makes sense to people but um, it's interesting I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting that but um, I knew it was going to be out by a little bit but 25 mil uh, I don't know well I guess that's 25 mil over this over five and a half meters um, yeah it'd be interesting to know what the deal is there i did do this wall myself so i do know that um i built put all the cladding and did all this framing myself and built this in underneath here myself but um yeah i do remember there was something odd about this wall that i had to pack it out a little bit at one end so that's probably the reason so i'm not going to dwell on it too much I'll just adjust this side, push it in a little bit further. It just means we're going to have a little bit more space between the joist, the front of the uh, the projector, and this joist, which will always come in handy. So <laughs> let's just do it. Well, this sucks. <laughs> Looks like I knew I had to do this, but I'm going to have to uh, knock out that noggin. It's got like 10 huge nails holding it in. I think I'm going to use a sledgy. We've got to get that out of there because obviously our expensive screen technic screen is going up into in between these joists so that's how you know it's going to be pointless if uh, we can't do that this whole exercise so i got to knock that out i can't find my big sledgehammer instead i've found my you know small one i found that at the dump I found the big one at the dump as well, but to be honest, the big one's got a really dodgy handle. I much prefer this one. Hopefully this is going to be, you know, heavy enough, but this one's got a heavier ha hammer on it, so I think we'll be right with this. I'm just going to, you know, have to turn into Thor himself and make that thing sing. Hey, old mate next door just gave me a really good idea. He said, um, if you want to take one of these out, you're best off getting a handsaw and just sawing it up the centre and then banging it with your sledgy makes life a lot easier and that makes a lot of sense. So I thought rather than use a handsaw, we would use my demolition saw that I got at the dump. I found a bag full of tools, DeWalt power tools with about six charges, no sorry, two charges and about six batteries. And uh, they, everything works great. Um, that's where that light came from. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna use this. I don't get to use this much. I think I've used it maybe once or twice. So let's see this in action. I'm glad it's only pine. Oh. All right, 
I don't want to go too much further because I don't want to go into the floor. I think that's enough. That was pretty easy. That was awesome. I shall hit it from this side. Sort us in the eye. There we go. How good was that? In fact, should I leave this? <laughs> I got rid of half of it. You could just leave this other half in, I reckon. We'll pull these nails out. But at least this piece up here, you never know. It's not doing anything, but um, it is he It's actually glued to the floor above. But at least I might be able to use that as some, um, you know, bracing points or something if I want to. I need something to connect to here. But uh, yeah, sorry I'm out of breath, but um, I'm just gonna grab a normal claw hammer now and see if I can pull out these nails. Gee, that made short work of that. In fact, I think I might even cut off a little bit more of that because, um, um, yeah, I think I need to cut more off if I want the axe. <laughs> Good on you, Ant. It's so hot. What was I thinking? Guys, oh. get some water on this. Oh man, that was the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Don't ever touch the blade of a saber saw after you've just used it. I mean, seriously, that was must have been red hot because I haven't felt this much pain after a burn for a long time. Um, I can normally just casually walk to a, you know, to a, a water faucet tap, and uh, this time I was kind of walking fast because it was really hurting. I've got a bag of frozen chips now, but uh, yeah. Yeah, just for future reference, don't do that. It's like I've only used a saber saw maybe three times. That's probably the third time I've ever used one. So yeah, you kind of learn by your mistakes. But uh, anyway, getting past that, that's great. I'm glad Gordon gave me that bit of advice. Just cut it up the center and I've, I've got half of it still remaining. I'll show you in a little bit, but um, I've got half of it still remaining and the other half is gone, the half that we don't want. And the half that's remaining is solid, so I can use that to anchor other pieces in the future if I want to. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to at some stage. But, uh, good, that's done. I don't have to think about it now. just have to think about my poor little thumb. Man, that was smoking hot. All right, update time. Let's have a look, see what we got. Well, I'm pretty happy with my progress. If you can see up the top there, we have now got a horizontal piece of framing, 5.4 meters long, that piece. And the cool part is, at least now, you can actually see over here, we have the mock-up of the side of my screen um, that's on the hinge. There you go. Now, uh, yeah, you can see how nice and flush that sits. 
Awesome. So I need to get another one of these horizontals up there a bit, bit further up. And um, that's basically what my 16, uh, what is it? Screen Technics 4.3 screen. It's a weird aspect ratio. It's 150 inches. It's massive. But uh, that is what it's going to hang off. This long, you know, horizontal piece as well as another piece that's up there. But uh, what's holding those? You can actually see in up there. You can remember, um, I well, I'm saying remember. For you guys, it was just, it just happened. But um, yesterday I burnt my thumb um, on the blade of that saber saw after I cut that noggin halfway up and I bashed it out with the, you know, the sledgy. Uh, well, I've got that vertical small piece attached to that and to here. Now you might think that that's not strong, but believe me, that could take twice my weight, three times my weight. It is super strong. It's got like five or six, um, six inch nails in there. And it's also adhesively glued by a special, you know, gluing agent to the floor above. But you can see how I've got um, next to it, I've just put that um, noggin, the green one up there. Now they will run all the way along and I'll have the same thing. I'll have verticals coming from that noggin down to these horizontal pieces. And uh, that will definitely take the weight of my incredibly heavy screen Technic screen. I don't know why they make them so heavy. That black one over there against the wall, it is incredibly heavy. Um, so that's a good thing. So I'm happy with where I'm at so far. Uh, the other thing is, listen, I'm just going to uh, just do mainly updates. I'm going to do maybe a bit of footage in between, but mainly updates, I think, because I'm finding it difficult to get any decent footage of anything that I'm doing because I'm making this up as I go now. I keep stopping, just staring at it, thinking what should I do and blah, 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 working it out. So I think it will be a little bit of footage, but mostly updates. And uh, I think we're going to finish um, this video shortly and we will probably finish it after I install the black screen. At least we'll get that black screen up there, um, the Screen Technics one. And uh, yeah, cool. Um, all right, well, I'll see you soon. Looking good. Hey, while I think about it, I found a, I came up with a really cool idea to pull the bows out of pieces of timber. This is a six meter long piece of, what is it, uh, 90 by 35. Has a slight bow in it. <laughs> it's not a big deal, like it'll pull out when I screw it to the studs. But um, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna let the weight of itself pull the bow out so I stuck it in my stairs. Kind of proud of that idea. I've had a look, I've just been like this overnight and it's 
It's virtually gone. It's virtually gone. Kind of works. Awesome. Oh, guys, <laughs> man, this is the following day right at the end of the day and it doesn't look like I've done hardly anything. Well, it probably does. Actually, I can't remember where I ended off yesterday. I don't think I'd put these horizontals. I may have put the bottom one on. I can't remember, sorry. But um, yeah, I actually got to, I virtually got almost to this stage yesterday and then when I was just calling it a day, I decided I would give it a remeasure. I decided to measure the distance between the back of this joist and the, you know, the front of uh, this, basically the fascia where I'm going to be putting the, the screen mounts. And oh man, it, it was too, it was too narrow. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And um, oh, everything was out and I was, I was just upset. And uh, it turns out, remember I was saying how this end of the, you know, the wall, the, the the house wall, or the, you know, that's, you know, where that silver um, builder's paper is. You know how I said it's actually like 25 to 35 mil out at this end than it is out at that end? Well, no, my building was fine. All the building was fine. I measured it wrong. You know, I measured this one down here. I did a measurement. You can see that short, tiny little piece of framing pine in there. I actually measured without that piece of framing pine to the wall. <laughs> and when I compared it with that end up there, I measured it with the piece of framing pine, which just happens to be 35 mil. So that end was fine. This end wasn't. I measured it in the middle and it was kind of halfway between. And I was just, you're kidding. So I spent all day today, I got up and I had to literally pull it all apart. It wasn't a big deal. I had to take these um, these columns, these posts at the ends off anyway because I wanted to cut them a little bit shorter. You can see how I've got them, you know, sitting on those off cuts down there because I don't want them touching the carpet so I can slide things underneath. Um, yeah, so it wasn't a big deal. And remember how I said, if I ever want to move this in and out, all I have to do is undo those two screws up there and those two screws up there. Well, that was pretty much right up until that point of the video but since I've actually put all of these vertical pieces up there that are connecting 
those noggins that I've also put up there in between the joists. So I had to undo all of those and then I gave it a tap. It wasn't a big deal, but when you undo everything, <laughs> everything seems to be spring loaded, you know, everything just kind of springs out and you have to, oh, you have to start all over again and it sucked, but I got there. And uh, in fact, I think it's much nicer than it is, than it was actually. I had to tap it back an extra 15 mil, which I think all up, it's actually closed the gap between the wall and the front of the screen by, I'd say, 80 mil. Yeah, and uh, so I think all up from the, you know, when, when the feature wall goes in on my plasterboard um, behind the speakers and to the front of the screen, I think I'm gonna have a gap of 5,600, which is, not 5,600, 560, so, you know, half a metre, six centimetres. So, which is fine, it's, it's pretty good. I preferred having a little bit more of a gap, uh, but you know, for standard speakers or normal size speakers, these Wharfdales here that I'm gonna be using at first, they're only like 32 centimetres wide depth, I should say. And uh, so that'll give me, oh, you know, a, like 26 centimetres, uh, I'm not sure. 26 something, 20 something centimetres. I can't, I'm not thinking straight, it's too late. I've just been racking my brain all day trying to get all this done. But yeah, I do have like 26 centimetres or something, I think, to play with. So when you take that into consideration, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, but uh, it's looking good. I'm happy with that. And um, I can't wait to finish this. I had planned this part of the video to actually be lifting the screen up by now, but uh, that's not gonna happen. And it wouldn't have happened anyway, even if I hadn't got all this wrong, because old mate next door has gone to work. So I can't lift this on my own. Um, yeah, I have to kind of get somebody to help me. In fact, you really need to have three people when you're lifting that you know, size screen. And I have something very, very embarrassing to tell you all pretty soon but I'll leave that later. But um, it involves one of these 150 inch screens that um, I tried to lift. But um, yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. I'll hopefully catch you soon and we'll lift this thing up.